One thing about being a dog, the dog can do almost anything he want to do. He'll in the house. Just because this is PBS, can you say he'll use the bathroom in the house? Oh, yeah. He'll use the bathroom in the house. You might hit him on his backside with the broom, but you'll forgive him. I can go on stage and I can sing God Bless America for what, and then do Sam Stone, which makes everybody cry. And that's a reason that I'm happy to be a K-9. My mother and my stepfather played what we would consider the cocktail circuit. When I was 12, my parents sat up a recording date and I asked them, can I make a record? And they said, oh, no, they ain't cut no record. I'm the I cried, ballyhoo. Somebody said, let him make a record. I, I sat down and started playing Heart Seek Troublesome Down Out Blue. At that time, you get your record played by Jack Holmes. You had a hit. Jack put it on and said, here's a kid, blah, blah, blah. Phones lit up and people liked it. Before I knew it, I was opening for Sam Cooke, the Drifters. And Mechanic Records, he said, we like to put this out. My mother got angry. She didn't understand. Why are they signing you when I'm the singer? She took all of the records and just and then threw them in the trash. Well, I went and got mine. I never considered myself leaving Portsmouth for good. There came a point that Portsmouth left me. Frankie called me. He said, hey, kid, I want to talk to you. And I got over to Birdland Record Shop. He said, boy, you can't sing? Why don't you stop trying to sing? You ain't going to never be nothing. I said, damn. That hurt me in my heart. 1970, I gave birth to Swamp Dog. It was because people were holding me down, pushing me down, knocking me down, and I ain't like that. I was smoking a lot, drinking a lot. You know, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> I've released at least 25 albums. When I come out, it's got to be, oh, Lord, him again. After I cut total destruction to your mind, I was getting tension from the FBI. I thought in the United States, you can write what you feel. As far as being the worst album cover in the world, it ranks in the top 10 every year. And maybe it's me. I don't think it's that bad. I wanted records. That's why I've cut so many records. I done cut some of everybody. Patti LaBelle, Wilson Pickett, Ruth Brown, 
Ray Charles sung one of my songs. I was the first to cut the Commodores. And you know, I did Gene Pitney. This was before they was letting blacks produce white boys. Gary, you as bars and that, we used to all write at my house because we had a piano. He had this song, Don't Take Her, She's All I Got. We got nominated for country Grammy. We got songwriters of the year. We got everything. Then I started going with rap. I was managing Dr. Dre when they were the world-class wrecking crew. Kid Rock, he sampled one of my songs and he went on and sold 17 million. He might have sold more than that now. DMX, 50 Cent, MC Breed. A lot of music, there's a lot of memories, and a hell of a lot of love for these records. If I can get up, I can show you another one real quick. Mm. You can cut those grunts out. <clears throat> Pretend that you're gone on vacation. I kept recording, but there was nobody interested in Swamp Dog. And you'll be back. Record companies were afraid of me. In a week or maybe two. But I was determined. And when the phone rings, my last two releases is on Joyful Noise. Records. To tell me you miss me. Brian Olson and Justin Vernon came up with some great music. I'll pretend I'm not looking my mind. I was trying different sounds and song structures. It came out good. This generation is more hip to my stuff than my generation would. People had counted me out because they hadn't seen or heard anything. I love you. And I forgive you. It was almost like coming back from the dead. The other album is Sorry You Couldn't Make It. That's the one where, for Swamp Dog, we went wild. Because we were trying to capture some country. 80% of the songs that I've written, if you break them down, they're country songs. I've been singing country all my life but they weren't letting the black people in. That was dead. My music now is opening up avenues that I've never really traveled. And that's naturally good for me because I want people to have the best of what I can do. Whenever I get up and I feel like I haven't accomplished anything, I walk out in my hallway and I see all the gold records and platinum records. It gives me a feeling of worth. I used to get over it with value, <laughs> but I don't have to do that anymore. No. 
Well, I don't think anybody figured I would make it as far as I made it. I've actually had a chance to live the big life. I've been all over the world. It's been fun. And the future looks good. We're still working. Still got contracts. Hell, I made a deal yesterday. I'm going to always make music. I'm going to cut a couple of tracks at my funeral. That's going to be funny. That's the story of a Portsmouth boy who became Swamp Dog. Will be Swamp Dog for the remainder of his life.